Hatch down. Here we are in the loft. It's more of a flop house. Cats are up here. Move anyway, out of the stay half asleep. It's not moving around. Right, uh, for those of you who watch my uh, Ordinary Life uh, video the other week, I just have to add one thing. I said I went into a Hell's Angels bar. It was a biker bar. It wasn't a Hell's Angels bar as such. You get, you get what I'm saying. Now, these things keep me awake at night. Right, what are we doing today? I shot a couple of videos up. First up is this um, reproduction set of six postcards of the sinking of the hood and Bismarck. Sent to me by CJ. Uh, he sent me a couple of these, and they're very nice, the um, artwork. So we'll have a flick through them. And I've, I've brought some notes down just regarding a few things I'll, I'll, I'll chit-chat about. So I'll keep that there. So the first one up. 055 to 0600. Bismarck's big guns fire at the hood. And there's a bit on the back. It says, I'll have to, I'll have to read that myself. Following the successful Atlantic sorties of the German battlecruisers Scharnhorst and Gneisenau on, in early 1941, they decided to also send their battleship Bismarck and heavy cruiser Pin Prince Eugen to join the fray. On the morning of the 24th of May 1941, the two warships, having slipped through the Denmark Strait, were soon intercepted by the British battlecruiser Hood and battleship Prince of Wales. The Hood opened fire at first, but the shells fell wide. However, when the German ships replied some minutes later, it was indeed a different story. So the hood at nearly six o'clock, 057, 0057. The hood is already on fire. And the legend on the back. Sinking of the hood in Bismarck. Oh, that's just the title. An early shell from the German heavy cruiser Prince Eugen had already hit HMS Hood, igniting cordite and ready ammunition stored at deck level. It caused a spectacular Pink blaze that could clearly be seen from both Sherman ships and HMS Prince of Wales, who were closely following the hood. The last seconds of 0600, the hood blows up. Very graphic artwork. The Bismarck also quickly found the range of the hood, and its fifth salvo straddled the British battlecruiser. One of the plunging 15 inch shells had penetrated the vessel. In the vicinity of the raging fire, seconds later, a huge sheet of flame shot skywards, followed by the most appalling explosions. The hood was doomed. HMS Prince of Wales, a short distance behind, had to alter course to avoid the wreckage. The magazine explosion rips the hood apart. Last minute, the once mighty ship. Within seconds, mountainous fireballs mushroomed into the overcast sky. HMS Hood immediately broke in two. The stern sank almost at once, while the bows first pointed skywards before slipping into the depths. Only burning wreckage remained of the three and three seamen out of the total crew of 1,419. The battleship Prince of Wales followed close behind, witnessed the whole ghastly incident. Moments later, she too received the combined fire of the Bismarck and the Prince Eugen was lucky enough to escape with just damage. Various theories have been put forward to explain why the hood blew up so easily. One thing is certain, she has insufficient deck protection against the plunging shell fire. Ironically, Rear Admiral Hood himself was aboard HMS Invincible during the First World War's Battle of Jutland when it suffered exactly the same fate. Also on that very day, May the 31st, 1916, the keel of HMS Hood was laid down. So here was a series of... Um, Artworks, so 10.30, May the 26th, Bismarck found again by a Catalina flying plane, flying boat. 21.04, the fatal blow by the swordfish or string bags which uh, nailed its rudder, I think. I remember reading in uh, Dr Ballard's discovery of the Bismarck that it was the ship was supposed to be able to steer with its props and it wasn't very good at doing that and that was one of the reasons why they... Managed to, I think it was going in a bigger circle. The battle has begun, May the 27th, 085, 0850. Uh, 1036, 10, uh, the last torpedo finishes are off. So we'll just, I'll just read it out. It is number one. Despite being shadowed by British vessels, the German warships eventually gave them the slip. However, two days later, on May the 26, 1941, a Catalina flying boat spotted the Bismarck and resulted in several attacks by a carrier borne aircraft of the pursuing fleet. Number two. 
As daylight faded, a final sortie by swordfish biplanes with torpedoes from HMS Arkwell scored a devastating blow on the Bismarck's stern, jamming one of the rudders. Despite desperate efforts, the German crew were unable to release it, and the Bismarck remained incapable of being manoeuvred. Number three, next morning, 8.47am, Royal Navy battleships Rodney, King George V, and cruisers engaged the Bismarck. Two minutes later, the Germans returned the fire. For close on 90 minutes, the battle raged up, but the Bismarck defied an onslaught of over 2,900 shells, refusing to sink. Number four, the last torpedo from HMS Dorchester, D Dorsetshire, may have hastened the end, but the Germans had already started to scuttle their doomed warships. We'll have to just get that again. The Bismarck begins to keel over and sink. By 10.40, she had gone. Finally, just before 10.40am on May the 27th, 1941, the Bismarck committed herself to the deep. She had become a helpless burning hulk, which gradually rolled over and sank, taking with her Admiral Leutens, Lutyens, Captain Lindman, and some 2,100 members of crew. Only 115 survived. So ended what was to be the last action between battleships in the Atlantic. Uh, thanks to CJ for sending me them. He actually sent me two packs, and a really professional YouTuber would have... Um, be reading one while he was looking at the photographs, wouldn't he? But yeah, professional in Steel and Stan's world. Uh, just a couple of little notes that I'd written down regarding the hood rather than the Bismarck. Although the Bismarck, I remember Dr. Ballard's book, I still have it, I still have it when they were looking for it. They said they were looking with the, the submarine and they came across a sonar contact. And as they pulled back, they saw the swastika on the deck. Even though it had been painted out because the ship was in action, there was some reaction to the microbes that were eating the deck. Oh, the, the difference in the paint, there was something that you could quite clearly see there. And a field of German boots, where the bodies had gone to the bottom, presumably. These boots were all together standing up. It's worth a read if you can get hold of it. The discovery of the Bismarck by the same guy who found the Titanic. But regarding the battle cruiser HMS Hood, I've, I've got down here, it was 1,418. 1,418, they said 19. Only three survived. It has got a, an odd connection with my part of the world. So the aft magazine was hit. One of the survivors was a bloke from Redcar. Now he did die. He died uh, when he ended when he in two thousand and eight. He uh, died down. He lived down south, but he was born Redcar. Now Redcar is the other side of the river, but it's in my part of the world. And he first saw HMS Hood when it was anchored off the River Tees as a twelve-year-old. So yeah, I didn't realize the Hood had been to uh, this part of the world. So there you go. So he was one of the only one of the three survivors. The other fella. Uh, one of the other two fellas was a bloke called Bob uh, Tilburn. He was born in Leeds. He was the fellow who was on the World at War uh, series where he he's interviewed and he says, well, I end up in the water. He he actually said he saw the, the, the bow raising up as per the um, that little bit of artwork there. He said he saw the bows ra raising up and he felt himself being dragged down by an aerial. So in the World at War interview, if you ever catch that, most of us have a copy of that one. He said, I, I remember him saying in like a northern accent, so I got my knife out and cut my sea boots off. And I'm thinking, well, you know, like you, you just cut your boots off. I suppose you just, you just probably went into some sort of um, zone, his discipline, his training. Uh, after he left the Navy, he settled in Stockton, which is my part of the world again, worked for the Inland Revenue and a petrol station. Also, a petrol station died, died in the 90s. Uh, I think Ted Briggs, the first fellow, he was blown to the surface by. A, a, a pot of air. I think. I think may, maybe. Uh, maybe Bob Tilburn as well. The boilers exploding or something. You're pushing the surface like a, a cork. And the, the other survivor, uh, William Dundas or William Bill Bill Dundas at Edinburgh. He never spoke about the incident and left the navy in 1958. He went on to run a mink farm in Scotland, and he died. He was dri driving to his milk, uh, mink farm, and he died as a result of a car accident. The injuries he sustained the car accident in 1965. Um. And at least two fellas from my hometown, I know one is buried in one of the local churchyards, and also not long after that, his brother died in the RAF. How tragic for the family. But doing a bit of research, there is a, a HMS Hood website. I found something else from your hometown, but when you go, I've just been on it now to look at people who were born in my county, and it just it's not not working for some reason, so I, I don't know how many were there, but... Um, you know, a lot of a lot of um, service people come from you know the north north of England, so yeah, at least two from our hometown. And the other thing, which I've read before, but I don't know whether it's uh, a salty sea story, is about Oscar, 
the cat on the Bismarck. There is a tale out there that the black and white cat was found floating on a plank, taken aboard um, HMS Cossack and was in co on Cossack when that was uh, sunk and then taken aboard Ark Royal and that was sunk and then it ended up in, in, in Gibraltar. So this cat that survived three sinkings, whether that's true or not, I, I don't know. But that's, uh, that's um, again, another part of the uh, Red Cross parcel that CJ sent me. And it, it's, a, it's a nice thing, a nice little item to just have in my display cabinet. And also gives you a focus, a talking point to uh, chit-chat over. So, yeah, it's 10 minutes. Ah, not bad for Stan. Usually I'm a 40 minute runner. So, that's my sinking of the Hood and the Bismarck reproduction artwork postworks from the old mate, CJ Military Collectibles. And this is Stan. See ya.